Nigeria's Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has stated that the present government's anti-corruption fight is alive and well despite allegations of corrupt practices at the NDDC and the EFCC and the Nigerian Social Insurance Trust Fund. He also reiterated the presidency's earlier position that Buhari President Muhammad Buhari would not resign as demanded by the opposition PDP. Joining us to discuss this is Debo Adeniro, anti-corruption advocate, and Chris Wokobia, legal practitioner. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. My pleasure. All right, I guess we have um, Mr. Wokobia with us uh, for now. We will let you know when we connect with uh, Mr. Adeniro. Uh, let's start on some positive. That is relative, of course, if you agree. The federal government says it has recovered over 800 billion naira in looted funds and have secured the conviction of over 1,400 persons. What is your thinking? Is this a good thing for the fight? First, let me say clearly that uh, our history is replete with so, so much noise and less uh, action. Our history, uh, particularly with respect to the fight against corruption, and I say this advisedly, do not forget that it was in this country under the other party, the other side of the behemoth. You know, we have two behemoths, the APC and the PDP, that um, a certain um, IG of police was sacked and convicted for corruption. Do not also forget that some of those that uh, the present administration is saying that they have convicted were trials that began under the past administration. What is important to note is that for us to applaud the fight against corruption, it must be frontal, effective, forthright, and less than selective. That's what Nigerians are saying. We're not saying that there is no fight against corruption at all. Nobody has said that. And so when I listened to the Honorable Minister of Information, I had a chuckle. Uh, Chuckle for two reasons. He talked about about over 800 billion that has been recovered, and then talked about the fact, fact that the, the fight against corruption is ongoing. But now, what you forget is the fact that as you and I talk, the chief officer, the man in charge of the fight against corruption, is being alleged to be corrupt. I, and I as we to, talk, I was just the about federal to government get hasn't done yeah. other than the the dramaturgy anything for trite about the chief law officer who is uh, Malami too, has been alleged to, to, have, uh, to have done a lot of things that are less than proper. So I think that we should remove politics and populism from the fight against corruption and stem corruption uh, squarely. All right. Let, let's bring in uh, Mr. Dabo Adeniro. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, my name is Debo Adeniro. Thank you very much. I am happy to be with you. All right. Now, I, I, I want to I ask you um, a question on the flip side of what Mr. Wokobia uh, has just said. I don't know if you heard most of what he said. Did you? Not quite. It's okay. It was breaking. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Lai Mohammed, the Minister of Information, had said that over um, 800 billion naira and uh, 1,400 persons have been convicted uh, since the fight against uh, corruption um, came right. on. Um, but there are those, even Mr. Wokobi alluded to it, when he talked about the current investigation of the EFCC boss, many believe that um, the acclaimed uh, convictions are suspect because the man who should be at the helm of affairs is being accused of corruption. Do you agree that the ongoing investigation cast a cloud over the convictions mentioned by Lai Mohammed? You see, the, the, uh, the whole thing about uh, the fight against corruption is not about identifying in advance those to be convicted, those to be investigated, or those to be uh, reported or investigated. Anybody can find himself you know, being accused of corruption. And from the beginning, uh, there hasn't been any chairman of EFCC especially that has not been uh, accused of 
corruption in one way or the other. Don't forget what happened to Nuhu Ribadu. It happened to uh, Ibrahim Lamode. It happened to Madam Farida Waziri. All of them were accused of one corrupt, uh, corruption crime or the other. But at the end of the day, it turns out that those who accuse them only want to get them out of the way, not because they have any watertight you know, case against them. So um, I believe that what is happening now is just about getting or maybe giving a dog a bad name with a view to hanging it. Uh, it is not likely that all of the allegations against uh, Ibrahim Agu who scared the test of the law, but it has happened, it has happened, and anybody could have been accused. Then talking about uh, how far the anti-corruption uh, war has achieved its um, expected goals. Um, Nigerians expect so much but the environment does not allow free opportunity, free hand for the anti-corruption agencies to, uh, 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 to operate. And that may be the reason why the uh, recovery is not in excess of what Lai Mohammed said, and the conviction, I mean, is also not in excess of what he has said. But I believe that the present um efcc has done far better than his predecessors maybe because the president or the administration generally gave it uh, 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 a leverage a, a, a op operating environment a free operating environment where he's able to do things the way he believes it should be done all right um, let, let's bring if, back mr wokobia to the conversation um lai muhammad um, says anti-graft war isn't relenting despite NDDC, EFCC revelations. And he issued a dare. His dare was anyone who disagrees that the anti-corruption fight is alive um, should prove it. Um, do you see the PDP taking him on or any other group who has a, who has a problem with the ongoing anti-graft war? Let me say clearly that for the first time in the history of our country, um, the challenge of being forthright cuts across every spectra of society. And I say this advisedly. Uh, I listened to my dear brother, uh, Debo Adinora, talk about um, um, the issues regarding the past anti-corruption chiefs and uh, the allegation of corruption. But I want to frontally address the issue of, uh, uh, as I marry them, the, the truth is that Lai Mohammed has begged the issue about corruption. This administration came to power on a three-pronged narrative and normative, which was first chiefly to fight corruption. The second was uh, national security and the other job creation and improving on the economy. If we're talking about anti-corruption, when in the first instance, Mr. President was nominating and, um, and presenting the list of ministers before the Senate, in the first term and the second term, Nigerians and indeed those who believe that this country must be, the corruption must be dealt in the country, pointed out a few names. Today, as you and I talk, the names are in the news regarding issues of corruption. We're talking about the cesspool of corruption called the NDDC and the superintendent minister, the uncommon defector, uh, Senator Pabio. We're talking about the issues regarding Magu. Don't forget that at some point, Magu was not cleared because there was a conflict of information between the DSS and, and the EFCC to the Mr. Senate. Mr. Mr. And Mr. when we in, talk in about corruption, time, let's, let's well, I would broaden like you to um, address Corruption the is not just about money. That's... Corruption has everything to do with impunity. And this administration has dealt with so many issues with impunity. And that's exactly why... About five years into this administration, we have an anti-corruption chief who has not been confirmed by the, by the National Assembly. And that's impunity, because the law provides for that. I think that the time has come for us to call a spade by its name. The fight against corruption is maximally selective in, under this administration. And I think that if we want to deal with corruption, 
we mustn't beg the issues, which you call a spade and, by its um, name. Um, that's why my question remains, sir. Um, is anyone willing to dare lie Mohammed to challenge the ongoing corruption fight with evidence so that that's some of these doing. comments you're that's making... That's what I'm doing now. That's what I'm doing now. The truth is, when you talk about $800 billion, the same Magua said that some of these funds were not paid straight to the CBN, that they were paid to the, the NMPC account. That's not the provision of the law. That's corruption. The law provides for an account that the EFCC should hold an account with the CBN, and then he said that he paid some of the monies to the NMPC account. That's corruption. All Impunity right. is corruption. And when we talk about how we want to salvage this country, we must be frontal and forthright. I think that uh, it, it, should, it should be removed from partisanship because the future of our children matters. And I'll give you a cheap information. As you and I talk, uh, the Todd Mainland Bridge is, is going through repairs. Todd Mainland Bridge is not up to 50 years. It is corruption that the integrity uh, level of the bridge that they paid so much for and several other uh, parts of our national life. All look right, at, let's, look, let's bring look, back look, this, look at um... what's happening with the healthcare sector. Everything in Nigeria suffers because of corruption. And and so Mr. Wakabia, let's, let's give uh, Mr. Abubakar some talk time because uh, we're almost running out of time on the program. Uh, Mr. Abubakar, uh, can you hear me? Mr. Debo Adeniro, I beg your yeah. pardon. Can you hear yeah. me? I okay. can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Reference was made again to President Muhammadu Buhari as the African Union's anti-corruption champion with an impeccable reputation globally. Is that enough if citizens remain seemingly discontented with the corruption fight since the advent of his administration? Well, you see, a lot of uh, people, a lot of countries are watching Nigeria. They know also that this um, uh, uh, behemoth, uh, that corruption has become in Nigeria, started a, a very long time ago. It didn't start yesterday. And that every country that has been able to tackle corruption issues or bring corruption crimes down to the barest minimum didn't do it within eight years. Even Ghana, that people refer to, was done under military jackboot. And you remember that Rawlings didn't take anybody for trial. You know, it's just some perception that people are corrupt, that he landed the, the, the then corrupt leaders up and showed them the way out of uh, uh, this planet. We didn't right. expect a Buhari to do the same thing. He also promised that he was a, a, a born-again Democrat. People wanted him to obey the rule of law. And the rule of law is being sabotaged by the same people that are supposed to safeguard the interests of the people. This is the problem. All right. I'm, Even I'm afraid, when I'm the afraid due you diligence just investigation seconds, sir. has been done, and... Uh, prosecution, I mean, it has uh, presented their cases. There are uh, so many uh, 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 clogs in the wheel of progress. You know that Buhari begged the judiciary that they will be the one to assist him to win the, the, the battle against corruption. The same judiciary has shown interest in the corrupt element than the uh, masses of this country. They have shown interest in, war, in sharing the loot than safeguarding the interest of the citizenry of this country. Mr. So Debo Adeniro, I the, am afraid that's the much time will permit us. I'm really sorry to interrupt you, but that's the much time will permit us on the program. Thank you very much for always obliging us and sharing your thoughts. Thank you very much. I appreciate you too. Uh, Mr. Chris Wakobia, thank you as well for your time. It's appreciated. You cannot fight corruption by appointing the corrupt. That's what I, I, I need to put lastly as my parting words. You cannot fight corruption by appointing the corrupt. Thank you again.
All right, we'll take our plus report now, and when we return, I'll give my take. Former National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adam Soshomale, has accused the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki, of fraud and deceit. Oshomole, who met with traders in Benin City in the company of the APC governorship candidate, Osage Ize Iyamu, said the governor took the state for a ride in the last four years. He said Governor Obaseki willfully deceived the residents of Edo State, claiming he was intent on boosting the fortunes of the state without commensurate efforts to keep his words. To apologize, whatever I have made my mistakes, God has given me good life, good strength yes. to come back before and you are doing for one night. Collecting money in consultancy. I am sure you watch on your television when the vice president came. They do car breaking somewhere in uh, Ikobaoka. They said they are going to set up industrial park where thousands of jobs will be created. They carry red carpet put everywhere. Made five, five speeches. Vice President made five, five speeches based on the promise that the governor made to him. Before Vice President reached airport, he has removed the red carpet. So, go to that place now. It's the thickest forest. It's now Arm Robbery Park and Kidnappers Park. There's a whole lot more you want that one. Is that I, Mark? No. I beg you to not go back to your members and tell them, let us not be deceived. What we do now will determine how it will be for the next four years. Exactly. The man who is there right now has not done well. He has not helped us. He has not helped our business. Putting him back there will be bringing poverty to ourselves. Let us trust a man who has an agenda, a man we know, and a man we can reach. We have heard what he said. When we get back to the agenda, then we will now study critically. Then we will now know who will come to you and tell you as traders, you are mentioned, the simple, all the help, we need help from traders. We are suffering. So we will come and let you know all the our sound of it. It is a fact that Southern Kaduna has historically endured a morbid harvest of deaths, so much so that the people live in perpetual fear. Some have described the killings as instrumental with no idea when the next unfortunate instalment will occur. It is frankly unbelievable that successive governments have failed to find a way out. How is it possible that this situation which preceded even the Boko Haram insurgency remains with us today with successive governments failing woefully in my thinking to go beyond political shenanigans and finding deep, lasting solution. I wouldn't be off the map to say the persistent crisis is a testament of our failed governments. While it is a shame on successive governments who have failed to help the people of Kaduna State find peace in their homes, it would be an even bigger shame on President Muhammad Buhari's led government that the scenario has repeated itself over and over again since 2015, despite the high hopes that his administration will be different. History would definitely not be kind to the president and the governor if they eventually leave office in 2023 without providing some foolproof measure to address the incessant cold-blooded massacre that have been the tragic narrative of the people of that area. I want to remind our leaders that every life wasted in Southern Kaduna or in any part of this country is humanity wasted, and too many lives have already been lost. May I further remind them that to live in safety while the people you lead live in fear is a truly sad commentary on your ability as leaders. Please do something and fast too before more lives are lost. And that is my take. Thank you very much for watching the program as always. Until I see you again, be reminded to please play your role as a responsible Nigerian in these trying times. Bye for now. I'll see you soon.